Hey guys, um, this is a general reading for Scorpio. Um, it's going to be Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you have significant Scorpio in your chart, uh, or if you're just drawn to this video, also for more of a complete picture, or if this doesn't resonate with you, check out my other videos that are either out or coming out, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, significant placements in your chart, or anything you're just drawn to. Um, know that this, some, none, or all of this may apply. Just take what, what resonates, leave the rest that doesn't. Energy could flip-flop. I could read it as you. It could be someone else. I could read it as love. It could be career. Just apply it to your life as necessary. This energy could have already happened. It could happen, be happening now. It could happen a few weeks, some months in the future. So, um, also check back if it doesn't resonate now. Um... Just a little FYI, I'm pretty sure I did a video on it, but I'm extending it from December and January and now into February, or January, November, December, into January. Um, the special I had, just because there's been a lot of energies, I want to extend it out, the holidays, all of that. Um, if you order a live reading at the regular price, then you get a free 25 to 30 minute either Reiki, um, Archangel Therapy session, Reiki session, Archangel therapy session, or access consciousness bar session, which is kind of like it declutters mental energy. It's like de, um, cleaning out your computer. It's like the same for your mind with like just beliefs, thoughts, things just kind of slowing you down and holding you up, blocks, patterns, all of that. Um, I also light a candle that I hold and it kind of helps me zone in on the energy and it holds the intention that any energy is moved, blocks are removed, um, just energies start to come in and do what they need to do for your highest good, a situation's highest good, or a, re a relationship's highest good. Um, that's free with the live reading, um, which is a $44, $44 value. If you pay within the month of D January, you don't have to use it in January. You can use it whenever you want, but you have to pay in January. You can also use the reading yourself, but gift the session or gift the reading and keep the session, whatever. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell. I put out different types of videos. Um, thank you to all of you who have been participating with the services. Those of you who have asked for donation information, um who are even liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. I can't reply to all the comments, but I read them all and they mean a lot to me. Just sharing on how it resonates, your journey, all of that. Just me connecting with your energy and you connecting back with mine. Um, but everybody who either utilizes services, um, donations, anything like that, all of that money right now is going towards things that help me continue to heal which also helps me give back to others, whether it's Reiki Master um, in the summer. I'm saving up to go to a plant spirit medicine school, which will be intermittently over two years. So that'll further heal me and help me to heal others, even distant wise and in person. So it's just helping me to give back any amount um, really helps. But even if you can't do that, I have other ways that I'm coming up with to help keep this channel going and to help you guys even more. Um, but even if you can't give more than that, just a comment and a like to spread the message, spread the video, if it helped you and all that really helps even that in itself, but all the information for my donation information, my PayPal, my email, everything like that is in the description box below. Please look at it all. Um, don't just get my, get to my email and then email me, uh, look at it all. Look at the disclaimer, look at the prices, look at the services, um, I will of course help anybody, but it does save me time. Um, but if you need help, of course, email me, but look at it all below. Um, yeah. So if you need help with this, if you need to know if this applies to you, if you need help getting past the blocks, if you need advice, whatever it may be, if you need, you know, block removal sessions, energy, energy sessions, um, whatever. If you have ideas that aren't even in there, I have a lot of people coming to me too that they have things they need help with that I haven't thought of or I don't have listed and they come to me and more than likely I can help you. If not, I'll be honest to tell you no or I'll try to point you to somebody who can. Is that it? Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you so much. Um, 
Okay, so let's get started with your guys' energy. If I think of anything else, I'll say it. Also, too, um, if you don't, I forgot, the other special I did list in my video, if you don't choose the live reading, um, you get 10% off any service. Normally, if you get two services or more, you get 10% off, but you just get 10% off a service. You cannot combine the offers. It's either live reading for the normal price or 10% off a service or whatever services you get. Okay, so Scorpio. Um... I so much for you guys have this feeling of, um, sorry, you're bugging me. Um, it's like this feeling of, um, a nervous excitement, sort of a little pent up. Maybe a little bittersweet even, but um, you guys might be feeling the energies that are rolling in either right now or um, with 2019, but maybe in this new moon energy. But I just get this like wanting to... Um, just wanting to burst like you just you just want to do it or you just want it done or maybe even like you're just getting so at that point where uh I don't want to say you don't care anymore but the change will be less painful than staying in whatever you're in and whatever you're doing, maybe. Um, it's just really eating at you. So let's just get going with your cards because one of your biggest things is I feel about speaking up and speaking your truth for you guys because, um, you know, for one, it came up in your cards and for two... I think you guys are just like waiting and biding your time and not saying anything. I don't know. But something about that is like holding you up. And on one hand, you don't want to say anything. And you're just waiting, like ho hoping it just comes and the time is ready. And you can just, you know, whatever, whatever happens. But on the other hand, like you're just so badly want to say something. Like you just... Um, let's just get started with your cards. In the center of your reading, you have the three of swords. So, you know, it's not feeling good. But... trying to figure out whether or not it's you've already started healing from this because the swords are like out of the heart. Still, like it's not you know it's not great of a feeling but it's like you pretty much got to where you're like you're accepting it or you've already accepted it you've already like started the healing process um
I think you already kind of see the situation for what it is. It's not really a... Um, surprise anymore. And I say surprise kind of in the sense of it still hurts surprise. Or you're still dealing with it or the beginning of it surprise. Like... You've already somewhat healed from it, or you are blocked off from it so that it cannot hurt you. Or at least that's what you're trying to do. But either way, I mean, the situation isn't pleasant. And it's probably something significant that's either been long-term. I'm really getting a lot of vibes about marriage or significant other situation. Um... Something significant of a long-term or commitment or something type thing. I really think this really continues off of the last so many, probably at least one or two uh, readings that I've done for Scorpio. Um, there is a few indications also of third-party third situations, which could be, you know, a having to separate of, of times, whether it's through working a lot, other people involved, friends, family, um, whatever it is. What is crossing you is you have the two of pentacles. I don't know. Did I ever? Yeah, I did. Um, the two of pentacles and the 10 of swords. So, I mean, you have a lot of indications here of, like, endings. It's crashing and burning. If it hasn't already, it is. I mean, you know it. Sorry, y'all. Um, either to end it or maybe even wondering... Okay, so this could flip-flop, so apply it as necessary. Um, whether to hurt somebody, and I don't mean intentionally, I mean, I'm getting this vibe that the situation, um, has already ended and crashed and burned for you, and here's you. This is the situation in your mind. I don't know how well you could see it. It's like a boat that's crashed in the ocean. It's all dark and like, ugh. And like, you know it. You already seen it. See it. Like, it, it is what it is. I mean, she even has this look like, mm, you know, as she's, you know, juggling the balls, pentacles, whatever. She's not that bothered by it. I mean, I can say not bothered, but kind of over it. Like, you already know you've accepted it. Uh, and I think you're just deciding, like, when is the right time or situation or way of, I don't know why, but when I look at this Ten of Swords, I get somebody else. Like, well, you could, I mean, you could be juggling two people. I get more of the decision. Um, so of course this could be being done to you. It could be cross watchers, but I think you're really trying, like, it's like, see, here's the darkness already around you. It's already there. You already see it. It's either, it's already a reality and this darkness is still coming to like this other person, I guess, just ending it. Maybe you'll view it or they'll view it possibly as like a stabbing of them in the back. Um, so yeah.
Let's move on. The foundation of the reading is, and, and that's another reason why I knew like to talk because like normally you guys don't really get a lot of cards or don't really want to speak so much and your cards were just like vomiting. So really having a lot to say, even if you're not saying it, I guess. Um, but in your foundation, you know, you have a lot of moon cards too, or aspects about moon. And I feel like this queen of cups could be you, even though I view the king of cups more as you guys, but it could obviously be any of them. Um, but you also have a lot of things coming up in this spread about perspectives. And there's something that you guys are not seeing. Um, but there's something that you're really either needing or wanting to see or that you really want or to focus on. Um... You feel stuck in this situation, but I mean, I feel like that's an illusion. I think it's, you're needing to see a different perspective on this. You have the Queen of Cups, the Hangman, the Death card, Queen of Swords, the Hermit, Three of Cups, Prince of, Princess or Page of Pentacles, just so you guys know. Um... You're feeling stuck in this situation. But really there's a perspective issue. There's something you're not seeing about how to end or transform this situation or at least the cycle of it. And I think you need to... Kind of clear your mind. Cut things away from you right now that are distracting you. Whether it's people. Uh, maybe if it is even overworking. Um, stressful situations. If you're drinking a lot. Uh, anything in overabundance. You know, if it's drugs. If it's anything that is taken away from time where you're just sitting in your own energy. And, and I get that may be uncomfortable. I mean, that may be why you or somebody else is doing all those things is because it helps you from being uncomfortable or anxious or fidgety or feeling like you're being productive, whatever. Um, but this is really important because this is like your life here. So there's something you're not seeing and you're also getting messages that you're not able to receive guidance here um because you need to make good decisions and cut certain things out even if it's just for a minute in order to be able to go within and see with this hermit energy so that you can bring back celebration and good times and joy back to your life maybe even some type of reunion whether it's this situation bringing it back better again whether it's something else that you might be thinking or hoping for, or even just pure and simple joy back in your life. And this new beginning. Maybe even you have communication you want to do, but either way, I feel like this is just this new beginning. You know, maybe even wanting to feel free and lighthearted like a child. Um, but something where you have like hope again. Where you can see life again. Um, you know, Scorpios are very much about death and rebirth. And it's just bringing it up to my mind to, to ask. How long have you been in the death part of it? And when was the last time you saw the rebirth? When was the last time you saw the life? And no... You don't always have to wipe things away in order to do that. There is a different way to do that. Uh, and ho hopefully as anybody, but especially Scorpios evolve, 
you know, they figure out how to do that. I'm not saying you don't need to end this, but I'm not saying you do, but it's to see it each time so that you don't have to keep doing the same thing or doing it in a different way. Um, but either way, it's like, I get this vibe that this is a very monumental time for you guys to not only do something, but to do it right. And if you do it, if you do it anyways, like to see the right perspective about it and not carry that stuff forward. Um, you know, I don't know. A lot of Scorpios are about like, oh, I can just burn it and it's gone and, and, and don't worry about it. And I know when it is and, and some of them can, but not most of them can. There's no way you could be as deep of a water sign as Scorpio. I could be wrong. I don't know. But I mean, you guys are my opposite sign. So it's going to carry over. There's no way you could be that deep of a sign and in some of that not carry over, especially if you're not doing it in a right way or so. And maybe that's what you have seen also. I mean, maybe that it's like, and, and again, this can be flip flopped, but that I don't know. Maybe there is a big lesson here of trying to do something so right this time. And you know, what a time to, what a time to be doing it right with. And what I mean by that is, I can really feel this in like the pit of my stomach, but, um, it really makes me sad to think about, but it's funny that I brought that up because it's almost like um, trying to make up for maybe loss or past things or, you know, I don't want to say resentment, maybe, but trying to make up for it. Um, and maybe that's the perspective that's being missed is, is that why? I really get that's why. Because it's weird that I brought that up. It's like, is there something from the past that you actually really didn't let go of? That with this situation, it's like, for whatever it could be from the past. I mean, it could be like something that happened. It could be things that you learned as a child, beliefs, whatever. But that this time you tried so hard to make it right, uh, to not have to, you, you tried to learn to not have to do it again or to do it in the same way or... Um, really kind of have to learn your lesson, for lack of better words. Um, because you didn't want to do that again. Like that maybe you didn't go away as clean slate as you had hoped for. And you're really trying to bring all those things that you figured out and learned really to this situation. Um, the vibe I'm getting from this is, yes, carry that lesson forward in a way that you learned, but this has a new set of lessons for you guys. Um, which it obviously would. That makes sense. Because you know. 
like soul evolution. So you're going to get a new set of lessons um, where, you know, this isn't really maybe traditionally about doing all those things. And maybe you're figuring that out. Maybe that's why you're like seeing it getting farther and farther away. Like, mm, this isn't possible. Like, okay, I tried. This isn't real. This isn't going to do. Um, don't forget to gather all those and accumulate them. Um, it's not like because it didn't work in this or it's not working, it's not ever going to work. You still need to keep that lesson. Good job for trying, I guess. I'm just trying to sound a meaning, but, um, I don't know. That really hit me really strong where it was like, that's why you're really weighing this up is you don't want to do that again. Or at least not in the same way. Like you want to have a legit clear way out where it's like you either really tried, you could tell you tried, or um, it doesn't look or feel so bad maybe on you or that you, um, I guess, missed the lesson. I don't really want to beat a dead horse on this, but and it's like, no, I got it. Like I tried. It just didn't work. And either maybe it didn't and that's what you need to see and learn a different lesson or maybe there's something else contributing to the situation you're not seeing that doesn't even have to do with the lesson or why it's a problem, but I don't really get that as much. I think in a lot of ways, whoever the Scorpios are that I'm connecting to, they're really just... I feel it getting closer and closer to, like, a screw this vibe. Um, possible ending or change of cycle coming. But um, that, yeah, so really trying. Um, just really look at it if that's why. If you're doing it because of a past situation or something that you had told yourself or seen as a child or your beliefs or whatever, if they're not working for you, I mean, then, excuse me, they're just, they're not working and needing to reassess the situation now and not based off things that you figured out, learned, thought, hoped for, whatever, as younger or any time in the past. Just what is it right now? And being in the present moment about that. And also seeing too that maybe the lesson isn't in staying or whatever. But it's in how you handle it. Um, doing things in a right way. Doing things in a balanced fair way. Uh, being the stronger person about things. Like say if it is about guilt or someone else thinking it's wrong. Like being the bigger person to handle the situation. I don't know, whatever. Let's go off that. I, but for some reason, I was really strong to say all that other stuff. Um, but either way, it's time that Scorpios feel joy again. Um, I just want you guys to figure out a way to go about hopefully doing it in a way that sits right with you. And if it doesn't, then do the work afterwards and the... the the hermit mode type thing in order to get yourself in the right mindset. Um, because there's really nothing... Uh, how do I say this? There's really nothing more like... Destructive than the Scorpio when they're in their lower energy, which also has very healing energy. But there's also like almost nothing more amazing than a Scorpio who's in evolved energy that does it through um, healing. And when they're really able to hold themselves up and be confident enough to not have to guard themselves with their shell, almost where they can shed the shell. I know most of them are proud to wear the shell, but eventually it it becomes kind of a, a weighing down and... Um, it blocks you off from life. It keeps you in the death and not the rebirth. Just it's kind of the way it goes throughout life. So it's not always like when you were younger. So, you know, hopefully to help you evolve and be able to embrace the more light aspect of it as well. Um, 
anyways, whatever. In your recent past, you have the Seven of Pentacles. So I feel like you've gotten to a point where you're like, I've harvested everything from this that I can. Honestly, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from it. Uh... You've invested a lot of time. You've had patience. You've waited. And I feel like you've gotten what you think, all of what you think you can. Um, I mean, you got something from it. funny because to clarify it it's like a card work occupation but and he's like harvesting stuff with a Seth scythe whatever which means not so maybe you didn't get what you want out of it I mean you probably maybe got something but you are waiting to, to harvest what you wanted out of it the the connection Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't know if it didn't end up with what you thought it was going to be. Um, or it didn't come around at all. So for some, this could be a work situation too. Maybe something dealing with money, something that you really wanted. Could be both. Uh... So either the love sector or part of your life is or is in abundant. Yeah, it just wasn't what you thought. It didn't go. I don't think it went the way it was supposed to. What's crowning the situation is you have the chariot and the ace of cups. Like, what's in your thoughts? So, wanting to move forward and either focus on yourself. I think you're wanting to, like, feel the joy. I think you're wanting to kind of go against the grain here and do maybe either against what people are telling you to do or against what you thought you were going to do or... um you want to just do what you want to do. You want to feel good. You want to feel triumphant. You want to know, like, all of you be in alignment and go. You don't want to be spread in different directions anymore. You don't want to be pulled in different directions anymore. You don't want to be told different things anymore. Here's this person saying this. Here's what I should do with this. Here's this doing this. Blah, 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 blah. And you just want to be all here. And do what you want to do. Because I get for a while you either haven't been or you've been holding it in or you just want to feel together and strong and triumphant and like you know what the heck you're doing and that it's working out for you and it's coming together and it's good and it's not all chaotic, it's not all over the place, which normally like Scorpios attract chaos or have a lot of chaotic, a lot of Scorpios do, so... Uh, maybe you guys are either evolving to where you're like, I don't like this anymore. Or hopefully you're being real with yourself if you are attracting it into your life that maybe there's some things you might be doing that you're attracting it into your life if that is so. But if not, it could just be your situation and all this other stuff I've been describing. And you're just like, I just want to do what I want to do. 
and I want to focus on myself too. There also could be a new love that you possibly want to travel to and go see. Um, I mean, it could be a resurgence of a love. I don't know, but um, let's for craps and giggles. See what the Ace of Cups is. Because that is one thing I got in a reading a while ago was that something had to end. Yeah, actually you have the lover's card too. That's twice that the lover's where was the other lover's. Oh, there's that. I don't know, were you waiting on something and it, and it fell through? Tell me about the Ace of Cups. So, new beginning. The Fool. Leap of Faith, maybe. You want to take a leap of faith with somebody, something, or whatever, or just on your own. It could be with somebody though, because you're know, like a future, likely future, you do have the Princess or Page of Cups. Which is funny actually though with this Ace of Cups, because you have very conflicting energies here. You conflicted, Scorpio, because you have the Fool and you have the Eight of Swords. Which is also in your likely outcome, I think. Somewhere in here. You want to move forward to something. Like, on one hand, you want to be free. On the other hand, you want to move forward to something, but you're really trying to figure out what that is. You might be trying to get yourself in alignment with it. Where do I want to go with this new beginning? Myself, this person, this situation. Um, I just want to do what I want to do, but the only conflicting part of that is what do I want to do? You know, do I don't want to disappoint this person. Uh, sometimes I want this, sometimes I want this. You also had a card that came up, I don't think I actually kept it, um, about integration. So, you know, you guys may need to do some integrating work, um, which a lot, you know, is what the chariot comes up as too, where it's like, you know, like mind, body, soul type thing, uh, where it's like, Here's your light and your shadow side. They're now together and on the same page, moving your body forward. Um, so you may have to do some integration work and really see what it is you really want. Because I feel like you're very conflicted. I mean, to have the Fool card and have the Eight of Swords, they are very conflicting energies. That you feel stuck. In your likely future, you have the Princess or Page of Cups. So, I mean, you could want to give a love offer to somebody. I don't know this, I don't know, at the bottom of your deck. I don't know, you have the Queen of Pentacles, which could be Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, Knight of Wands in between, Queen of Wands, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, and then the Devil after that with the Chariot. The Eight of Wands, Queen and King of Cups. Focusing on what they want. Balance the death card. 
Six of Pentacles, which comes up quite a, quite often for you as well. Knowing where to take charge in matters of the heart. I don't know. At some point, you might realize. It, it, I feel like you're torn, <clears throat> which is very apparent. But which direction or path do you go? And I don't even think it's just two. Uh, you might have more than two to possibly go in. Uh, oh, that's right. Tell me about the page. Of yeah, exactly. Exactly what I was just saying. Like, uh, yeah. So you got a lot of options. What, what, uh, I, I mean, that's why I said, if you need to detox your environment, I think you or somebody else does, because I don't think you're seeing things clearly, it's too much, um, you're not knowing what direction to go, but destiny, could be timing, karma, whatever, but there's a lesson here, and you are just burning down with it. There's just too much. Like, where are you offering yourself? Where are you even offering it to yourself? You can't even be single or independent. You need to be single for a little while, possibly. You or someone else does. To move all that stuff out in order to get yourself. Like, do you even remember who you are? Like, I don't know. I'm just getting this vibe. Like, do you even remember who you... Do you even know what your energy feels like? Because I'm just getting this big vibe here of... Being so stuck and so confused and having, like, so many options. And it's like, on one hand, I don't know, maybe that's great. But can you see properly anymore? Like, can you even make a decision? Like, I don't know. How good is it for you if you're feeling stuck? You want a new beginning, but yet you're stuck with the Eight of Swords. Like, you have all these options, but yet you can't see anything, and you're carrying all these burdens, and really what you really want is this full energy, and you want to feel independent and on top of your game and prospering and growing. You want to be growing. Because you feel stagnant like no other. And you have for the last so many readings. But whatever you're doing is keeping you there. So. You or somebody else. But you're just like waiting. What are you waiting on? What is Scorpio waiting on? You have the Eight of Pentacles. What are you working on? Money? Are you waiting on money? I think you're waiting to... Okay, so I th I'm sorry if my desk is squeaking. I think that you may be waiting until your money's right, like you just know your situation's better, you're emotionally more aligned and better. It's like I'm waiting for the time to be right. Or it's like I get this vibe like somebody who like say they don't normally exercise and they're like, I'm waiting to want to exercise. I'm waiting to feel like I want to exercise to go exercise. That doesn't happen. Um, 
I'm not going to say this isn't going to happen or this isn't a good strategy. I think you're kind of lying to yourself here. Um, it is what you're doing and what you're keeping around you and your choices right now that are keeping you in this spot of being conflicted, of feeling stuck, of feeling that things aren't working and you're just not growing and you are just working and grinding and keeping your head down. Meanwhile, feeling like the world and your life is just passing you by, possibly. You're waiting to take action until everything is the way you want it to be. You want to feel good. I, I don't know if you're controlling, trying to control the end of this situation. I mean, of course you would be. <laughs> you know, Scorpio and Tauruses are all about control. So, um, especially Scorpio. So, I think you're trying to control how this situation ends. I don't know, though. Don't Scorpios learn really like the tower energy? That whole just poof, release. What about this? Something about this is really hitting to your core. Um, uh, something about this decision or whatever is really hitting to your core. Whether it's like your core beliefs, whether it's something you always promised yourself, whether it's something you really wanted, whether it's money, whether it's security... But either way, for whatever reason, I'm not going to try to dive too deep or what about mothering you guys, but um, you're trying to wait until everything is like, like so the way you want it to be. And I'm, I'm not sure if it will, maybe, but I don't know how much more karma or detriment it's going to cause before it gets there. So I don't know. Just be careful with that. Um, as well as I think you're confused on what direction to go. I mean, and that's what, that's what this energy will do to you, do to you, <laughs> whatever will do to you too, too much, too, too much, too much going on that you can't even see properly. I don't know. Where you see yourself, you have the High Priestess and the Two of Cups. So, I don't know, maybe you're trying to listen to your intuition. Maybe, like, you don't know or you're trying to figure out what to do either with something within yourself, integration-wise, or within a union. You're really trying to seek and figure it out. You're also... Possibly being secretive and not speaking about stuff, about love or what your plans are. Um, tell me about the High Priestess. I think you want to offer love. Tell me about the Two of Cups. And like the end of, an, of a new beginning and the beginning of a new one. Uh, or you, some of you, I don't know. I really don't want to read this this way. But could be like just in love with love. Liking the offer, but kind of having secrets. Like offering a whole lot of love. Maybe sex. 
Breaking beds, breaking hearts. I don't really know. But either way, I'm trying to figure out what to do at the same time about a situation. I think internally and externally. Um, what's in your environment? You have the moon card and the prince of wands. So trying to see the path, secrets, what to possibly let go of. Um, tell me about this Prince of Wands. You might have either been through a lot with somebody or they've been through a lot with you. Somebody's just ready to fight, but at the same time, just. I don't want to say defensive, but they're definitely a little paranoid. Maybe this could be you. A lot of times I see it as the moon card of Scorpios too. Just because not only of the secrets, Scorpios are very secretive. Just even naturally, they don't like to say a lot. But um, also about the subconscious. Very much about the underworld and subconscious. So... I see it actually all as Pisces. I, I see the moon sign almost as all the, all the water signs. So this could also be you as the Prince of Wands. Could be someone you're dealing with, of course. Uh, someone likes to take a lot of action. Just wanting to have fun, though. Uh, tell me more about the Prince of Wands. Yeah, exactly. So you have the Death card, which is you, and the Three of Cups. So... Not only is this you, like I said, it probably is, but I think you're also like, you don't really want this commitment anymore. Whatever it is, this commitment, this situation, whatever, like you just want to have fun. Maybe party, but you want to have fun. You want to do what you want to do. You want to be in the life cycle again. I feel like you're... Maybe you want to come together with somebody. You want to end a cycle and come together with somebody else. Uh, oh, wow. So you have the star card, the six of cups. Could be someone from your past, childhood, uh, maybe even waiting because you have kids. Or having like some nostalgic thoughts anyways. And you want to go see them or you could have been waiting for your situation to get better but maybe some of you might have somebody either that you've been thinking a lot about possibly somebody from your past childhood or whatever maybe somebody you even have kids with That, I don't know, like you have Empress and Emperor. Or some of you just wanting to walk away from that union. And be like kind of independent on your own. Some of you could be wanting to go towards a Taurus. Virgo, Capricorn, but especially a Taurus. I don't know. Who cares? Let's go off that. But this situation definitely is like... And you have, again, the Empress here. Which... Okay, well, I guess since I'm saying it, I'll get into it now. You have the Magician as one of the cards that wanted to come up. So you definitely wanted to manifest something. Maybe you're feeling something spiritual. I don't know. You got like Stonehenge there going on. But you have the Empress. 
And you have the King of Wands. So the Ten of Wands again, which is you. And then you have the Queen of Wands. But she's like burning something down. She is Aries, Sagittarius, Leo. Uh, you have the Ten of Cups. So maybe something that was between. That's what I'm saying. Like, may, I don't know if you're coming up as the King of Wands. But your focus is on an Empress. Which Taurus or Libra. I guess it could be anybody. Somebody you see as creative, abundant, blossoming. Um strong, motherly, like, um, I don't want to say goddess, but, you know, a just very powerful female, strong, very nurturing female, and you're looking at her, it seems, he, him or her, like, you're very interested. But you've got a lot of burdens. You want to burn something else down. Or somebody else did. That's been created. Uh, you have a lot of anxiety. And a lot of boredom. You want to create something with either someone else. Or you either were. There were other parties in the mix. You have the lovers here. Make a decision, which it probably is that too, because you have justice. A lot of competition. Um, so yeah. I think you want to possibly be single. Or feel independent again. Maybe you're acting like you're single. But there's definitely a lot of competition and a lot of things going on around you or somebody else. And needing to make a decision. I think, though, the thing about it is, like, you have the Nine of Pentacles. I don't know. Can I paint a picture here? And the Nine of Pentacles. So, it's like... I, I get this as you. Like, your energy. I think you're, like, a single energy. I'm not sure if you're single. I don't think so. But your energy is single. Um, and you possibly do have a lot of suitors, offers, things in your life, whatever. But there's something that you're looking at or like waiting on or going after that you want to offer your love to or that you're waiting on. And that you might be doing a lot of work in the meantime or that you're working towards. Could be for your kids or it could be something you're very nostalgic about, thinking a lot about. Could be from your childhood. Um, could be something you had wanted since your childhood. Maybe something for your kids? I don't know. Um, but... Possibly soulmate type energy that you wanted to go after. Possibly leave another commitment or just go towards this and maybe make a type of commitment. Again, you have the Hierophant, so another Taurus vibe. Maybe you're just riding out on the Taurus energy. I don't know. They are your opposite sign. Um, I do get, though... Okay. I do get, though, a lot of things from the past. Because you have a lot of Six of Cups coming up. Uh, a lot of things with kid vibes and stuff. Um, and then going towards it. Maybe even seeing the lesson on something. Maybe you do feel a very spiritual connection. Um, it could be with a Taurus, like I said, or something just strong, significant. Um, but something that you really want that may make you feel like I was saying, it's funny how all this stuff comes together, like the light again, like the light of the day, 
not just the dark or the death, like the death and the rebirth, like feeling the rebirth, making you feel something that makes you, that could be the Six of the Cups too, something that makes you feel youthful again and happy again and like a child again, that brings back that lighter, childlike essence of yourself, not something that is so miserable and rigid or unhappy or... Um, you have the devil card here, but one thing I think it was in my Taurus reading one time that like I described this particular devil card in this deck and it's like, this is, um, obviously it's a Capricorn card, the devil card. It's ruled by Saturn. Saturn is a very parental, um, also about divine timing, um, karma or lessons. But how I described this vid this card in this video is like, here's two people in their young, naive state, um, kind of just enjoying the free, naive part of it, not really aware of the responsibilities in the world or how things really go or they just don't have that um life experience or knowledge or whatever really to go off of they're just doing their thing in their youngness and young energy and exploring and i don't know kind of like um the raw emotion of it, really not having something that feels like it doesn't have responsibilities. Like this type of connection, this type of interaction that is so carefree and not weighed down that you are just in the pure um, either love or ecstasy or lust or moment of it. Not having to worry about all the responsibility. Meanwhile, this as the Saturn parental energy is looking down and being like, enjoy it now, young ones, because, you know, you don't even know what's coming or whatever. But this could be part of the nostalgia, too, is why I'm bringing all that up. So, something that, again, like I said, you'd like to go towards that, it could be Capricorn, too, because you do have, well, you have Taurus, then this is Capricorn, so Earth sign. Maybe even something that you feel like will give you grounding and stability, um, and make you feel a good and alive and young again. And I don't know. Something about this person maybe may make you feel that way. Or you remembering them make you feel that way. And you would like to move towards that and thinking it'll bring you more of a peace of mind. And take you out of this five of cups, five of cups energy and into this. Six of Cups energy and feel victorious. But I think you might want to go after that connection. And that might be what you figured out or known or I don't know. Do you want to communicate that? Again, another Taurus vibe. You want to take the action to create the balance on that and the healing. To change it and to turn the wheel and create a stronger foundation. But you're trying 
to figure out how to do it and maybe exactly what option or maybe which option is best. How do you go after it in the right way? In a lucrative way? And until you figure it out, you're just going to sit there and wait, I guess, until you figure it out. I don't know. Um... How your environment sees you. How is all making sense? I feel like this is like all over the place for me. So, I feel like how your environment sees you is that... You're just keeping what you want and your stuff kind of pent away. You're holding on to everything. I think you're holding on to what you've created, or at least that's what they're they're looking at you like. You're holding on to what you've created, but that you're like a Scrooge in it. I mean, this guy does not look happy within this whole family deal. And... I don't know that again you have another Taurus vibe though which could be Capricorn Taurus Virgo but you have bulls down here I don't know I just really get that some of you and this probably matches that one that was like it was like a twin flame type one either way it was a strong spiritual soulmate connection but it's like you're just like uh well you're just like locking down at the moment Staying quiet, doing what you got to do, but you're miserable in the situation. And it's almost like if you look, it looks like he's like looking off at this person or like he's daydreaming about it. Let me pull a card on this Queen of Pentacles and see exactly what. Tell me about the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. So it could be the person that you're stuck and attached to. Um... But considering the fact that it was in the devil card over here, like I described, I think this is that other person. So Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. That you might be sitting there thinking and pondering about and like not speaking up about possibly. Um, what's in your hopes and fears? This part's a little confusing. Is there separate? I think they're, they separated themselves possibly into hope and fear. So I think that you hope. You have the Princess of Wands, the Fool, Five of Swords, Six of Pentacles. So I think that you hope. That you could start on your new path, a new exciting path with not a lot of worry or responsibility and that you come out kind of a winner in the situation. Um, I hope you don't try to hurt somebody else so, or somebody else doesn't try to hurt you, but either way that you come out... Um, Going on a new beginning, you're excited, you release a lot of the worry, um, the fight is over, hopefully you come out on top, and that there's like even give and take, you're happy, um, and, and abundant. Balanced. Like you feel balanced again, I guess. 
I think you fear that the situation, you have the world, Prince of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, Eight of Swords. I think that you fear that what if the situation ends? Like that's your two paths I think that you're constantly worrying about. Is this situation ending and one of them, I mean I know this isn't obvious, but I think this is playing over and over again in your head that one of them you end up like good, balanced, blah, blah, blah. And the other one ends and you're kind of don't move forward exactly in the way you want or you're slow to, you focus on what you want. But uh, maybe as you're rebuilding, you are doing what you want and you're happy, but you're alone, alone and stuck and not happy and you're just as unhappy as you were up here because you're in the eight of swords but now you're alone and unhappy so i feel like you keep focusing on this though like that if you leave this situation when either the timing isn't right or you don't have the situation exactly the way you want it or something built up first, possibly for you to switch right to, uh, like you're trying to, excuse me, avoid the tower, which is your own energy. Yours and I, I see it as a Uranus energy too, which would be Aquarius, but more your energy. You're trying to avoid it. You're trying to avoid your own energy, which means you're trying to avoid yourself. You're trying to really avoid looking within yourself because your two paths is one leads to something good and the other one leads to you now being instead of just stuck, you're alone and stuck. And that's like really your fears kind of coming through. Uh, it's, it's really honestly an illusion. I don't know if that's the only thing that's keeping you stuck. I'm sure it's not, but um, it's an illusion. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. So in your likely outcome, I think your likely futures and your likely outcomes are good. So I'm excited about it. Uh, guess what you did? You couldn't avoid the tower. It comes anyways, or at least it's likely to. These are the energies. But it causes a rebirth. So, yay. <laughs> you know, just like I said, you how long have you been in the death part? And how long has it been since you had the rebirth part? Well, guess what's coming? The rebirth part. And you get to feel kind of lighter and like a child again, which is exactly like the sun card over here. So you're heading towards, like, that sun part. Uh, just who knew? The thing you were trying to avoid is what brought you what you wanted. And so then you have the ace of wands reversed, and you have the three of wands. So, you know, I was a little confused about this. Like, how the ace of wands reversed when you have the death card and the rebirth. And so, um, I think what this is, is... It's really emphasizing the one wand short of the new foundation. Again, like the four of wands, maybe what you're looking for with it. So you're, maybe this is either delayed or not here yet. You're still waiting on it for this foundation, for it to be the four of wands. Um, just a piece of advice on that too. Don't just wait for this to come externally. Like he's waiting on it to come. Um, but I was like, what's the energy for this? And you have the five of pentacles and the, um, the knight of pentacles. So I think this is from, you know, the tower energy and possibly the shifting of all this situation, this maybe even money issues, but being left out in cold, just the sadness of it, the change really. And the rebuilding process. Like you're starting slowly but surely rebuilding. Um, you know, making sure you're detailed about it. It's just right. Especially with Scorpios. I mean, 
One thing I feel, is there anybody else? Tauruses are very patient too, but they're more of a long haul patient. Uh, they're a little bit more bullies. I mean, Scorpios can be bullies too, but um, Scorpios have this thing about them where they just really do have that patience where they can just, you guys, whatever, can really just wait things out for like the right time or exactly the way you want it or put things exactly to where it was like somebody else's idea to do it or I don't know, just there's a level of strategy and methodical thinking and just all that stuff behind it. So I think that's what you're waiting for with this and why there's the Ace of Wands reversed and the Three of Wands where you're like, okay, now you're in the part where, okay, everything, it, it came down, it ended, you're in the rebirth and the changing process, you possibly even had some like enlightenments or downloads or whatever where you see things a little bit differently now or a lot of that energy has cleared out and you're, this isn't really a bad thing, it's in a you're still building thing and you're still in the transition to the four of wands. Um, however, in your likely future, don't forget, you have the page of wands, which could be offering love to someone else or self-love, new creative venture, but you have the seven of cups, the wheel of fortune, and the ten of wands. So be careful where you're either maybe just decide to like have your fun for a little while while you're strategizing, putting things together, um, or you're just waiting on it. I do have to say though, I mean, yeah, have your fun, whatever, but don't get yourself into predicaments that can get yourself into more trapped things or in trouble or whatever. I would recommend it's just me personally. Um, because this seemed like a very significant thing for you or a significant change. Maybe focus on clearing your energy for a little while so that this time while you're transitioning, your mind is clear. It's in your thoughts, your energy, your stuff, not other people's or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe try to clear some of these options out so you can see things properly um, and go about things in a healthier, more longevity kind of way. Um, because, you know, Scorpios are really for the long haul too. I mean, you guys are Taurus's opposite sign. So ideally in, you know, an ideal happy way, but so, you know, you don't want to keep rebuilding. I mean, who, most signs don't, but you know, whatever. So anyways, this is from everything that just happened and you're trying to slowly, methodically, detailed wise and everything like that move forward in a very smart way. Uh, you're looking to really build your strong foundation, I feel. What is Scorpio waiting on? I think you're going to play for a little while. You have the five of wands. I'm not sure if it was upright or reversed. And you have the knight of wands again. You have the moon again. Like what's in your environment? You have the knight of wands and the moon. You have the knight of wands and the moon and in between it, the lovers. But, I don't know, I think you're going to enjoy your time for a little while by yourself. 
Because, I mean, in both your likely future and your likely outcome, you both have cards that show about, um, you know, a lot of options or, I don't know, like secrets or wanting to do your own thing or, or whatever. So... Um... I don't know. I don't know if that's just trying to say that you don't really rebuild in a foundation for a little while. Like you're seeing what ships. I mean, it's just going to say it over and over again. You're wanting to do you this time, however that comes about. Um, all right, so let's get into your um, cards. I've got a little bit to read, but it's interesting, so I would recommend. Um, but it's, it's telling you not to lose hope. Like, please don't lose hope. And then you miss somebody. I don't know who you hope, but, or miss, but. So. I keep waiting for help, for hope to come, but all about me is cold. I cannot find what I'm looking for, and indeed I can barely remember what it is I was in search of before I got so lost. I'm cold and alone and no one is with me, but I know I have this apple and what I tr when, when I truly need it, I will eat it and then all will be well. I don't know. I don't know what you're waiting for. Um, I think you're also relying on things outside of yourself for your happiness. So hopefully this tower and stuff brings you that internal happiness. I don't know if this person you miss is somebody who's past, somebody from your past, or if it's a part of yourself also that you wish or want to go back to. Um, but it's about focusing on where you are now and the even give and take in a relationship and being able to handle what what it is that I think you're in, what is it called, analysis paralysis. And thinking of the situation for, for really what it is and the pros and cons of it, like you have exchanging gifts and you have think or reversed. Um, and think of the pros and cons of it you really have a lot of cards here about thinking about a situation in reality for what it is and what's going on and what action will, will be for the better. Like take your emotions out of it. Um, honestly, you might even have to take your logical thinking out of it and just really listen to your intuition and just see like, does staying in this situation make things better? No, then you know what action you have to take. I mean, I guess if you have a plan up your sleeve, then go for it. But what was it? Yeah, I think you're definitely trying to strategize here. Um... Love is not logical, but when you choose a partner, it is good to have things in common other than desire. This is a time to weigh the pros and cons of your relationship. If there is enough common ground, go for it. If not, there are other fish in the sea. Don't force it to work. And should others tell you who they are, take them at their word. Now is the time, to, not the time, to indulge in a fantasy. No matter what, in this case, the facts are the facts.
do something creative, exercise or meditate, and you'll soon come to your senses and have an aha moment about clarity due to the analysis paralysis. But saying like not to try to force something and make it work. And you have the angel of love. This is like your energy in this situation. Walking away. Patience. And under that you have attachment and journey. And you have the root chakra. The fifth chakra. There's things about security here that you're going through and speaking your truth. You're at an indecision because you know it's it's going to it's going to move a lot of things and change a lot of things in your life. But you're being guided to things that will bring you balance in a psyche cycle that's ending, but it, you have to take action. If you do, you will have abundance. But anyways, um you have here the ancient ones. You have many things about being guided here. And I think you know it. If you don't, you are. Focus and then act. So, I mean, I think you're focusing. I just think you're not acting. And then you have need and necessity. Know your fears. Yeah, but there's a lot of fears here, I think, going on for you, like I said, with the root chakra. But need and necessity. So I am going to read this one to you. 28. Night and day exist within the very same moment. Creation and destruction wear the same face. You only see one or the other because you are not seeing the whole. What you may see is harmful, another may believe to be good. All is based upon perception. In nature, all occurs according to need and necessity, not right or wrong. Ask yourself, is there a genuine need to act? Is change necessary for your continued well-being and happiness? If the answer is yes, then act. If the answer is no then do not. And again, you got a lot of chariot vibes here. And the justice, you have quite a few of those. So wanting to move forward and be aligned and make a decision that I think you're confused about with a new beginning. But I mean, what you really want is to heal and be good, feel good. I mean, and be independent. I think you really want to have like this single happy energy again and kind of end whatever cycle you're in and kind of move forward and look to new directions. Your ships to come in and bring on a new foundation. You're waiting on the four of wands. You keep getting this with this Queen of Pentacles, too. Like, I don't know. Is she... Is she what your Four of Wands is? Yeah, and then the, and then the Empress on the other side. And then the Taurus, right on the other side of the, the star. And then the devil, which is exactly all I was saying before. So some of you really have this thing where, like, you're waiting on an earth sign or somebody. But it could be Car Cancer, Capricorn, Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo. But I really get a lot about Taurus or Capricorn. What does the Four of Wands look like? Scorpio, which is the sun, which was associated to that person. Exactly like I was saying, the empress, the queen of pentacles.
But you're confused though, because the Four of Pentacles looks like that. I'm sorry, the Four of Wands looks like that, which the Four of Wands is like stability, you know, structure, what you want, things coming together, being happy and all that. Um, but it also looks like to you of holding on. It's like you really want that. So on one hand, part of you is like you're waiting and you want that and you really want to move forward possibly with this person, like this Empress, this Queen of Pentacles, whatever. Um, that really looks like a balance and a strong foundation to you. That looks like your Four of Wands. But your Four of Wands also looks like this, like just kind of closing off, being to yourself, doing what you want to do and being in your own energy. You're kind of really conflicted, which makes sense too. I mean, you're still healing and all of this, like you shouldn't really move forward in that. Um, yeah, see, let me look at this, like right at the bottom of the deck, you've got here, you're waiting, but you're not saying anything about this Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, the Knight of Swords, like you want to come in and say something and let them know that you want to take action on the Empress. You want to, you're anxious about it though. And you want to start a new beginning and you want to invest. I think you want to end all this other stuff or at least the feeling of it. Um, I just get a very conflicted, it's a back and forth energy. Like all the cards are back and forth, back and forth, which is probably also why you're just like sitting back waiting and just wanting to sit in this energy right now. I don't know, like work it out, figure out this perspective, get it out of you, whatever it is. Cause you're going back and forth between it's like this, like, these are your conflicted energies. I'm going to wait and not say anything, but I'm going to be like this. I'm going to wait and not say anything, but I'm going to be like this. I'm going to wait and not say anything, but I'm going to be like this. So, I don't know. <clears throat> um, Alright, so... Two things left. Um, I'm going to pull... Ones that are like good kind of for the soul lesson type thing. Sorry you guys, uh, readings always not being longer, but it is what it is. You have two, you have the Ace of Scrolls and you have the Moon. Of course you have the Moon because you have it a million times in your reading as kind of like your soul journey lesson cards. And then you have two Animal Spirit cards. I'm going to read both of those real quick because I think they're pretty um, significant. So the Ace of Scrolls, which has the Raven in it, and the Raven is really about magic and magical things kind of happening, especially synchronistic stuff. Um, Aces herald new beginnings. One of the Ravens is meant to unlock the mystery of shamanic power animals for you. Animal spirit guides provide protection, healing, and encouragement when life tosses difficult challenges. Spirit animals enhance our understanding of non-ordinary reality. It was once believed that animal energies aided physical healing, a notion dubbed animal magnetism. Medical science, however, uncovered no supporting evidence, so animal magnetism was denounced and, for the most part, forgotten. Yet good things from, come from Franz Mesmer's 19th century belief system, one being the word mesmerize. Mesmer believed the energy that energy could move freely from animate and inanim inanimate objects. Of course, another century would have to pass by another before quantum physics supported his teaching and revealed the truth of an interconnected universe. No shaman today or even a hundred years ago would ever toss take issue with Franz Mesmer's insight into the role that animal spirit guides have in healing. The Ace of Scrolls underscores one of the more important lessons, nurturing your intuition so communication with the other world becomes like second nature and part of your ordinary reality. 
All the scroll cards are like intuition, airy and subjective. By the way, mesmerism morphed into psychological hypnosis, another key that unlocks this unconscious mind and gateway to the other world. New ways of thinking also, I'm sorry, always encounter opposition, especially when non-ordinary reality is involved. The Ace of Scrolls says to hold fast to your beliefs and endure ridicule with humility. The world is rapidly changing before our very eyes and many find it unsettling. So you also have the moon. That's what the moon looks like. And underneath that, you have the devil. I think you're really going to be learning about yourselves and really seeing into your shadow side <clears throat> and your underworld. Because under that, that, you have the devil. And the devil came up a lot here, too. You have a lot of things about Capricorn as well. Which is lessened. It's a very Saturnian energy. So, like I said in the beginning of this reading, I think there's another lesson or a newer lesson for you guys. And it may be also in life and how you handle things, but I think it's very much going to be something within yourself. Like, you're going to learn something about yourself. If not, you should. Um... The scent of moonlight is indeed a scent of mystery and magic. <sighs> Mother goddesses. The eight point star. I'm not going to read that. The oceans like the moon symbolize the unconscious mind. The dwelling place of waking and sleeping dreams, intuition and active imagination. Watch your dreams and imagination. Pay attention to them. Wine dark seas glistening with moonlight have long symbolized the great mother and the feminine principle. The moon in a reading can be a life-changing card. So two cards you've got about life-changing things. It can teach you how to listen to your inner voice, the voice of the great mother. Two cards also about intuition. Life-changing events, listen to your intuition. And lead you to great place, uh, and lead you to place great trust in her. Many cards in Crystallis, which is this deck, help develop the intuitive skills we all have. As those skills develop, so does the sixth sense of clairsentience, which is the art of feeling knowledge. Clairsentience, also a metaphysical sense we all have, is the art of knowing that something is right without knowing why. And without the need to analyze or intellectualize it. Exactly. You are overthinking this. You know what to do. The scent is the well-being of empathy, the wellspring of empathy, compassion, and consolation. Clairsentient is best illustrated by the six of souls, or not souls, scrolls. Um, clair elephants are perhaps the most clairsentient of all creatures. When we experience inexplicable knowledge, we experience moon magic. And divine inspiration. Delight to be contemplated, not analyzed. In a reading, Moon may be asking you to ramp your right brain up for greater yin and yang balance and energy. Which had a lot of Six of Pentacles cards, which is all about balance. Consistent work with um, Chrysalis will help. Engender such balance. The Western mind, as we all know, is conditioned to be left brain oriented. That's why Chrysalis is a feminine deck inspired by the moon's nocturnal yin energy. Okay, so let's read your animal spirit cards and then we're done. Which is good, because I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, 50. So you have integration. That's where I saw integration. Here's alligator. Okay, so the poem to this is alligator. Let me drop my judgments, accepting life with grace, so that forlorn care and worry will vanish from uh, from my face. Let me integrate each moment, digesting life with ease, counting all my experiences as equal opportunities. That might be why you kept getting the six of pentacles. Um. The powerful gift of alligator medicine is to fully appreciate and integrate all that life offers. Gator shows us the value of thoroughly digesting both the pleasures and pains of life. 
In many ways, alligator's medicine is reflected in its behavior. When gator rolls under the water with its prey, its message is to roll with the punches when being attacked by life's circumstances. Carefully storing its prey under a log until the meat is tender teaches us about patience and proper timing, which is exactly what I was talking about with Scorpio. They're very big about patience and proper timing. So... I don't know. Maybe you guys know what you're doing. I just hope you're having the right perspective about it, though. Choosing to laugh when tangled in your own seriousness can immensely diffuse the str strange hold of anger and judgments. Self-importance and inflexibility. Yeah, like, don't become too rigid. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, to where you have to keep your shell and make it harder and harder. Once your rigidity, like your shell is removed, you are free to again integrate the present set of circumstances, finding what you may have formerly overlooked. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you need to go spend time by yourself and also remove certain things from your environment. Um, but I also get from that that once this is all done, like, you will heal. Like, it will get better. Um, and you're going to gain other lessons from this. But you'll see more clearly now if you can find a way to fix your perspective during the situation and be a little bit more lighthearted about it. So you can see, like, you're overlooking something. Then you can learn Gator's lessons on how to digest the value of any life lesson. Gator medicine people refrain from passing judgment until they have examined all the facts and seen all sides of the situation. It may be time to drop opinions and judgments so that the present situation can be fully understood. Gator might have surfaced in the river of your life to tell you to digest the situation at hand before making any rash moves. You could also be dealing with someone who is too rigid or too serious. If this is the case, embrace your flexibility knowing that you are expanding beyond your former limits even if others are wallowing in their self-created quicksand. So that's another thing, too. Like, if you're expanding and growing, like, maybe this is another situation where you're expanding and growing again, and maybe somebody else isn't, and you feel bad about that, or this vice versa, you know, and you're like, oh, I don't want to be in this again, like, just... Try to see if there's a different or better way you can go about it this time. But if not, like, don't feel bad about it. You know, this is your life. You came into this world alone. You're going out of this world alone. And you came here for yourself and your soul journeys. Even over kids. I mean, you bring kids into this world and help guide them the best you can. But they have their own soul journey to go through. You know, it's... You can't, like, stop yours and then come back and have to do the thing, same thing and repeat it over and over again. Like, your soul journey is, to some degree, and for the most part, separate from theirs. Sometimes they intertwine as far as lessons go, but you got to evolve. And that's one thing, too. Like, if this is about a relationship or, you know, even a work environment or whatever. Um, like, one thing I've really learned is that any healthy situation, relationship or whatever... It evolves. They both evolve. And if they either evolve separately or in different directions, or one evolves and the other doesn't, most of the time, like they don't they don't last. And sometimes you can work through that. Somebody sometimes people need a little bit of time. Maybe that's the case, but Maybe you're supposed to evolve past this person. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Fully know your situation. Hit me up for a personal reading so I can look more into it. But maybe you're supposed to evolve past this person. And I don't know. Like if they don't catch up, like, and not every time somebody evolves, they have to leave. But if it's, if it's hindering you and you've checked all your perspectives, you know, Asked, you know, get 
you know, different types of guidance that you trust, maybe even spiritual guidance. You know, you've tried all your options and you've really waited and you've, you've really just looked at all your options. Maybe that's another thing with this in your likely future of being the page of cups and you have the seven of cups, the wheel of fortune and the, the 10 of wands is that you know that change needs to happen. You've seen the lesson because you've looked at all your options. There's no other way out. And at this point, you are just completely burdened by this situation. And it needs to stop. That you can't see any other option or any other way. And that you have to pick self-love in this situation. Like how this page of, you know, this particular page of cups, which it is about, could be about self-love too. Then you have your thoughts about the ace of cups. But she's like holding it for herself. You're like, I've got to choose me. I'm going to sink too. Like, I feel like I'm already sinking. And you're like, no. Like, this situation either has to evolve or change in some other way. So make sure that you're also growing and not just putting it on someone else. If they're not growing. But then I think you might have also felt like you checked all options. And it's just like, I can't, I can't do anything else. And it, I think it probably disheartens you. You might have accepted it by this point. But... It probably disheartens you because you don't want to let that go. You don't want to start all over. Like you really don't want to do that, but you can't, you just can't keep it the way it is. It's not evolving. And if it's not evolving and it's stagnant, then you're going to be end up being, you're going to either end up being stagnant or you're going to end up doing things that you don't want to do and that you're going to feel bad about. And then you're going to be carrying more weight, more burdens. It just, it's a, it's a cycle. And that's probably the cycle that you or somebody else around you is in right now where it's, you feel like you've done everything that you can do. And at this point, either you're going to become stagnant and you're going to self-destruct or you're going to do a lot of things or contribute in a way that the situation is going to end up self-destructing anyways. But then there's a whole lot of karma and resentment and just pent up hurt stuff that you either did or had to go through. Um, and if, if I just described what the situation is that, you know, that sucks, that's not good. That's not healthy. Have you been rushing through life and not taking the time to count your victories or to digest your rites of passage, which this is very much a rites of passage type of thing, by the way. Um, especially with the wheel of fortune there, the, the world card, the death card, probably even the justice card. If so, it could be your time to honor your progress, mindful that quick fix solutions do not support long-term goals. Avoid getting stuck in the duality and the quagmire of the human judgment game. Use calm, resolve, review your healing process and life lessons, integrating the growth you have attained. Excuse me. In all cases, Gator is telling you that something may have escaped your perception. Ask yourself what viewpoint or possibility you, uh, possibility did not get factored into your assessment. Did the missing piece of the puzzle keep you from having an accurate overview of what is now occurring? If so, it is never too late to reevaluate the situation from a more integrated and flexible point of view. Remember, gator eyes and nostril nostrils are often the only parts of its body above water while it senses its surroundings. Gator integrates all possibilities before it makes a move, which is probably a lot of what you guys are doing because that's what Scorpios do. However, I do have to say as a possible piece of advice... Uh, you may want to do, like I said, and remove a lot of the other energies from your situation, meaning either people, any overindulgences, um, if you're drinking a lot, partying a lot, just listening to like bad friends piece of advice, like go talk to people who have no interest in it, no skin in the game, whether it's a counselor, spiritual person, just somebody who just doesn't know anything of the situation and can give a non-biased piece of advice. Um, but honestly, I would clear your energies too before doing that because I really think you're going to see something you didn't see before. It may even be uncomfortable to you, but hey, if you're really trying to make the best decision here, you may want to do that. All right. So one more. You have hummingbird joy. So this is bringing you to joy. It's definitely your rites of passage type thing.
And it's saying you can go in any direction from this. Uh... Which is funny that I was saying how long the bench you guys were living. But anyways, hummingbird is associated with the ghost, ghost shirt religion, which taught that a certain dance done properly would bring about the return of the animals and that white people would disappear. Once again, the original people would know the joys of the old ways. In Mayan teachings, hummingbird is connected to the black sun and the fifth world. Um, hummingbird can give us the medicine to solve the riddle of the contradiction of duality. The song of Hummingbird awakens the medicine flowers. Hummer sings a vibration of pure joy. Flowers love Hummingbird because nectar sucking brings about the reproduction of their families. Plants flower and live because of Hummingbird. Hummingbird can fly in any direction, up, down, backward, and forward. Hummingbird can also hover in one spot and appear to be motionless. Kind of like you. Great Spirit created Hummingbird to be slightly different from other cre feathered creatures. Because of their magical qualities, Hummingbird feathers have been used for a millennium in the making of love charms. It is said that Hummingbird conjures love as no other medicine does and that Hummingbird feathers open the heart. Without an open and loving heart, you can never taste the nectar and pure bliss of life, which is exactly what I was saying about y'all's shell. To brother and sister hummingbird, life is a wonderland of delight darting from one beautiful flower to another, tasting the essences and radiating the, radiating the colors. If hummingbird is your personal medicine, your love life and its joys. Oh, you love life and its joys. Your presence brings joy to others. You join people together in relationships, which brings out the best in them. You know instinctively where beauty abides and near or far you journey to your ideal. You move comfortably within a beautiful environment and help others taste the succulent nectar of life. Hummingbird holds the bow of beauty, which is delicately inlaid with gold and silver flowers, pearls, and precious jewels. Hummingbird disdains ugliness or harshness and quite quickly flies away from discord or harmony. Uh, I can't even read. I'm getting tired. Of discord or harmony. Disharmony. If Hummingbird has flown into your cards, get ready to laugh musically and enjoy Creator's many gifts. Drop your judgment, judgmental attitude and relax. Hummingbird will no doubt give you a flash of the spirit, darting here, there, and everywhere. Get ready for a strange new burst of energy, which may send your senses reeling. Hummingbird hears celestial music and is in harmony with it. Hummingbird may invite you to art museum or a concert. Hummingbird energetically embraces the highest aesthetics. Never be coarse in front of Hummingbird, for this is a fragile medicine which may have no understanding of worldly affairs. Beauty is the target, and Hummingbird's mission is to spread joy or be destroyed. Hummingbird quickly dies if caged, caught, or imprisoned. Exactly like you. Like, that's the whole point of it's... You've got to get out of being caged, caught, or imprisoned. Follow Sister Hummingbird, and you'll soon be filled with paroxysms of joy and experience a renewal of the magic of living rebirth. So, uh, this is long. I love you guys. I hope this helps in some way. It was a little all over the place. I hope you guys find a way to get unstuck soon. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you for everything. Don't forget about the specials. Look below um, services, description, PayPal information, donations, all of that. I love you guys. I'll be seeing you soon. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. Bye.